Well, here's the reality. To turn on neuroplasticity, you don't need to give high doses of ketamine. Low doses, the starting dose, half a milligram per kilogram over 40 minutes, that is enough to turn on neuroplasticity. That's what I've done for 10 years. These guys that now, you know, there's a myth out there. Oh, you have to hallucinate to cure depression. That's nonsense. That's poppycock. Welcome to OTR, Over the Rainbow, achieving mental health for real. This podcast offers hope to many people who needlessly suffer from mental health issues. Your host, Bob Adelman, interviews experts like doctors, counselors, and life artists who give helpful tips on living a happier life. But most importantly, Bob interviews ordinary people who have suffered with a mental health issue. Each one has recovered to lead a much happier life. You can do it too. Bob's notes on today's show follow. Today, I interview Dr. Theodore A. Henderson, PhD, who is president and founder of Neuroluminance Inc., which is bringing revolutionary treatments to bear upon traumatic brain injury, depression, Alzheimer's disease, post-COVID fatigue syndrome, and other brain disorders. He holds three patents and three patents pending. He has published in neuroimaging, psychopharmacology, dementia, photobiomodulation, and traumatic brain injury. He has over 70 publications in top research journals and has been cited in over 900 scientific papers. Now, here's Bob with today's show. Good morning, Dr. Henderson. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here. How are you today? And I believe you're in the Rocky Mountain Highs. Is that correct? Yes, I'm in the Denver metro area. Right. Okay. Um, so, per the introduction, we know Dr. Henderson has... Uh, new and innovative ways of treating depression. Uh, I think what we want to do is, if you could just give us a synopsis of your, I guess you call it brand, uh, that would be a good start. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that. Um, and I think my, my brand is in part summarized in my recent book, Brighter Days Ahead. But the, the brand is actually uh, deeper than that. Um, what we're doing is offering revolutionary and innovative new treatments for brain disorders, whether that's what are traditionally thought of as psychiatric disorders like uh, depression, PTSD, ADHD, which are really neurological disorders. They're changes in the brain that lead to these psychiatric symptoms. Or we're talking about neurological disorders like dementia and Parkinson's disease, and traumatic brain injury. So we've developed and patented uh, new treatments for these types of brain disorders. Well, my favorite is ADHD because I believe it's the catalyst for everything I have. Uh, tremendous performance anxiety because I could never talk without getting nervous if it was an authority figure or in a group. I'm very awkward with people. They see me as being rude, so it's hard for me to get along with even my family. Um, what would you do with a person like myself? I've tried uh, all the medicines, and nothing seems to fit. Yeah, let's talk about ADHD for a second, okay. because, I mean, ADHD is a bit of a garbage pail term. Um, yes. And this is true for all psychiatric diagnoses. So what's ADHD? Well, you have trouble paying attention. You have trouble focusing. You have trouble um, organizing things. And you have trouble kind of keeping track of all the details of life. And, you know, that would be true if you had a traumatic brain injury. If, if you had taken a shot to the frontal lobes, um, you would have trouble with all of those things. If you, had, uh, if you had a mitochondrial disorder that made your mitochondria not work well, and therefore your frontal lobes didn't work well, then guess what? You wouldn't be able to pay attention. Right. So... In some ways, it's a garbage pail term. Yeah, we do. We do but, have a plus side of it is that it, it works on the dopamine. So if we get enough dopamine, then we can't stop. We we super focus. At least I do. Yeah. And and and, the, and what I see it as is not really paying attention, but it paying attention to too many things at once. Mm -hmm. You hear everything behind you. If I go to a restaurant, I'm the only one that hears the music. Like I'll right. make a comment on the music, and they'll say. What are you talking about? 
So uh, that that's the main problem, and it just leads to my anxiety because I mean, even if when I come on this show, uh, I never know where my brain when is when is my brain going to go south. <laughs> I don't know. Most of the times it's good, but it, it's a little bit uh, hard, you know, it's hard, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, to be have so much anxiety. So is there a solution for me? You know, how do we treat ADHD? I mean, right now it's, it's, it's stimulants, right? They increase the dopamine, just like you said, uh, and they work for, you know, six, eight hours if you're lucky, and then they wear off, and then, you know, the mornings and the evenings suck. So here's what we're finding. Um, we have been treating patients with infrared light and seeing really good results, whether we're talking about treating traumatic brain injury, depression, PTSD, long COVID, or ADHD. And, you know, before I explain infrared light, let me just, can I just play a little audio clip of one of my patients? Yeah, go for it. All right. So I'll, I'll just set this up. This is a dentist, and he signed an ROI, so I can talk about him. And he's a dentist who developed long COVID, and he had the brain fog and, and the fatigue, and he, and he developed a tremor, which is like not a good thing for a dentist. Now, that all occurred on top of, he had a lifetime of ADHD, and he took Vyvanse, which is a, a stimulant, right. for his ADHD. And so th here's what he had to say. I got bonuses out of the treatment. Um, you don't think I'm ever going to have to get ADHD medication refilled? Um, I don't think I'll ever need a, a benzo again? Th that's his experience. He... He came in for treatment for long COVID. He got infrared light therapy, which I'll explain in a little bit. Right. And around about uh, treatment 14, he pulls me aside and says, Doc, this is weird. All of a sudden, my Vyvanse is making me jittery. So I stopped taking it. And holy smokes, I can focus just fine. Wow. And that was a year and a half ago. And I talked to him last week. He's, he's back, you know, working in a very busy clinic, doesn't need his ADHD medications, can focus just fine, goes to sleep just fine, doesn't have any anxiety anymore. That's the oh. power of this infrared light therapy. Is that what you have listed as NILT on your website? Yeah, NILT, Near Infrared Light Therapy. We, we, also, call it, we also call it LUMIT, L-U-M-I-T, which is Laser Unattenuated Multi-Watt Infrared Light Laser. Gotcha. But... <laughs> Who knows what that means? <laughs> right. Is this is this a brand new technology, or it's been out for a while? Well, yeah. the 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 tech the the concept goes back thirty five years, and NASA played around with it, and then Harvard and a University in Israel and the Uniformed Services Hospital and several other places got very serious about studying this. And the first clinical trials were for stroke about uh, ten years ago. Uh, a little more than that. And they failed because they got ambitious. They tried to te uh, treat deep strokes and they're using fairly low power infrared light. So what, what we did, my colleague and I, we went into the laboratory and said, how do we grow this up so that it works on humans and gets through the scalp and the skull of a human and does what Harvard was showing in mice? Because let me tell you, the human skull is much thicker than a mouse skull mine being thicker than most. <laughs> so, you know, we had to kind of have enough power at the surface to get through. Um, and so we figured out how to do that. And so we were able to then, you know, deliver the kind of energy that Harvard was delivering to mice and showing that they were turning on brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which controls and induces neuroplasticity in the human brain. And, and they were showing, Harvard was showing that, look, you know, we, we treat this, we bonk this mouse in the head, we give them a traumatic brain injury, we treat them with infrared light, and holy smokes, they have a 95% neurological recovery. So that, that's what we were gunning for. And so we started by treating people with traumatic brain injury. And, you know, some of our patients were veterans who had, uh, you know, been uh, one, of, <laughs> one of our favorites. He was a bomb diffuser. Now, I'm not sure how great he was at his job because he had eight explosions that he went through. <laughs> he was probably very good, but, you know, there's a lot of bombs and they're very tricky. 
Um, and you know, we treated him and he went from just being a mess. He couldn't hold a job. He was about to get divorced. He was financially ruined. And now he's, you know, a successful, uh, electrician working for the local brewery here. He's been doing great for 10 years. Now, would someone have to go in for this? Uh, they, they must have to go in a local, uh, yeah, it, laboratory yeah. of some type. Yeah. It's a, it's a hands-on treatment. You know, and it's a 20, 30 treatments, hands-on, twice a week, takes about 30 minutes. But you do have to be present. You know, I can't I can't beam the right. laser through uh, the computer. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you have any locations on the East Coast? I wish, you know. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, we're, we're located here in Denver. We, we have, we are looking for investors uh, to create a nationwide network. Uh, everybody mm-hmm. went under a rock when, you know, during COVID and they, you know, haven't really come out yet except for, uh, uh, except for software and AI stuff. So if you know any investors out there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> is there other doctors that offer this service or is this um, exclusive to you? Uh, what we are doing is exclusive to us. Okay. Now, there are folks who are playing around with low uh, wattage infrared light devices. I mean, you could buy a device for $2,000, plunk it on your head. The the light is putting out a half a watt. Now, I can tell you that a half a watt doesn't even penetrate a millimeter through human skin. Mm-hmm. I know that because we did the studies and other people have done the studies. It's been shown over and over again. So you're not treating the brain. You're, you're treating the skin. <laughs> so... Um... I I would have to fly to Colorado or how's yep, that yep, work? Yep. And we have patients uh, okay. doing that all the time. We got a patient coming in from Florida this week. We got a patient coming in from Canada next week. You know, people mm-hmm. fly in from all over. How long is the process? So, um, you know, let's, let's, it, it, it depends from person to person. So let's pick an average, you know, the average patient gets about 20 treatments. So if we're going two treatments a week, you know, that works out to about 10 weeks. Um, you know, if we really press it and they can tolerate three times a week, then, you know, we can do it in a shorter amount of time. But one of the things a lot of our patients do is they fly out here, they get six, eight treatments, spend a couple of weeks, they fly back. They come out a month later, get another six, eight treatments. And here's what's important to understand. The infrared light is turning on neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity unfolds over time. It keeps going even after the light is turned on. Mm -hmm. So we have patients who come back after that month at home and say, Doc, this is wild. I'm even better. I I got better even though you weren't treating me. And and that's That's to be expected. Okay. Um, Would would you want to talk about the the ketamine? process as well uh, oh sure sure absolutely i haven't i haven't talked about that uh since it came out and i would be very interested in your opinion i guess my first question about that and what scares me the most about that is like going into a trip and losing control is that mm-hmm. realistic or how does it work and what does it do to you okay yeah and and you know that is sort of a, a real important crux here so let me, let me explain a little bit about ketamine in the first place. So ketamine is a dissociative anesthetic. At low doses, it basically it feels like you take a step or two back from yourself, and you can get some perspective on yourself. At bigger doses, then, yeah, you trip out, and, you know, you see, you know, pink elephants and, you know, all sorts of floaty things. And, and and then if you get really, really big doses, it basically acts as an anesthetic and it knocks you out. Now, ketamine is a very, very safe anesthetic. It's the most commonly used anesthetic in children's hospitals. Um, and the reason is that it'll knock you out, but it doesn't suppress your breathing. And that's an important thing. Now, uh, the discovery that ketamine uh, helped depression um, came about 12 years ago, 13 years ago. And I opened the first ketamine clinic in Colorado and the 13th clinic in the country, and that was 10 years ago. 
Now, our understanding of ketamine has grown, and what we know is that ketamine actually turns on that same neuroplasticity. It turns on BDNF. And in fact, it's the most powerful chemical mm -hmm. that can activate BDNF that we know of. What's BDNF? Is that dopamine? It, it's not dopamine related. It's really more related to turning on the brain's own ability to rebuild itself. Okay. Because what people don't understand is that you know, we're all taught, oh, depression is about not enough serotonin or not enough dopamine. And, and that really has been disproven. What actually happens in depression and also happens in PTSD is that the brain is degenerating. It's breaking down. The brain is losing synapses and losing circuits. The, the frontal cortex and the hippocampus get smaller in depression. And so... We need to reverse that. We need to rebuild the brain. And this is why ketamine is such a powerful antidepressant. Now, the problem comes in that um, the average ketamine clinic, and these days you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a ketamine clinic. They're all over the place. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry decide to open one. The problem is that they're all following this protocol of giving ketamine three times a week for two weeks for a total of six treatments. Now, the problem with that is that it ignores the fact that the, how ketamine works is by turning on neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity takes time. I never, ever, ever treat a patient more than once a week in 10 years. In fact, you know, it's often week one, week two, week four, week seven. And the average number of treatments that my patients get is 4.3. Not six, not six plus boosters, 4.3 in their lifetime. Depression's gone. Thanks a lot, Doc. Have a nice life. And, and why is that true? It's because I respect the neuroplasticity. I respect that it takes time right. for neuroplasticity to happen. And that's why these ketamine clinics do, do something really wrong, and it wastes a lot of ketamine. And that's to do these six infusions in two weeks. Now, the second thing they do wrong is that point you hit on. Oh, I don't want to go and have a bad trip, Doc. Well, here's the reality. To turn on neuroplasticity, you don't need to give high doses of ketamine. Low doses, the starting dose, half a milligram per kilogram over 40 minutes, that is enough to turn on neuroplasticity. That's what I've done for 10 years. These guys that now, you know, there's a myth out there. Oh, you have to hallucinate to cure depression. That's nonsense. That's poppycock. So these guys who are out there giving one milligram per kilogram, 1.5 milligram per kilogram, all they do is make people sick and upset, and they don't make them better. Is this something that could be done virtually? Uh, ketamine? No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> there, and I think that's malpractice uh, because... Ketamine it has very rare but very serious side effects. And so when I uh, administer ketamine, I have a nurse anesthetist, a highly trained nurse with advanced training in anesthesia. They sit in the room the entire time taking Q5 vitals. Now, thank God and knocking on wood, I've never had to pull out my crash cart. I've never had to pull out my defibrillator. In 10 years, hundreds and hundreds of patients, but that those remain real risks that ketamine administered with no medical supervision it could be harmful. Could you take us through a trip? I mean, what does it feel like yeah. to, to take the medicine? <laughs> well, the you know, um, I, I had, for about eight years, I had not uh, ever, you know, I had no experience with what ketamine felt like. And one of my colleagues said, hey, look, you are giving this to patients and you have no idea what it feels like. You know, you need to you need to test this out. So I um, I had one of the nurses administer ketamine to me one day uh, in the standard protocol. So I, I can tell you my personal experience. Um, it, it, you know, it, it the first 10 minutes feels a bit like, you know, two shots of vodka, um, you know, a little tingly, a little relaxed, a uh, little woozy. Uh, and then you start to kind of get in, you know, kind of go inside. And so I was seeing, I was seeing swirling colors and hearing sounds that sort of were like whale song, you know, um, that was my personal experience. 
And it's at that point, my friend, that I began to worry. B, with all my training, I began to worry, oh, gosh, what if I go to some bad place? What if I go to some bad, atrocious memory that I have? Oh, my, that could be terrifying. So for I'm thinking this in my head. And I said, hold it a second. I'm in control of this. I can go wherever I want. And so I said, let's go to a happy memory. And I picked the happiest memory I have, which is the day that I adopted my youngest daughter from China. And that experience of first holding her in my hand and and holding her in my arms and starting to play with her and her, instead of bursting into tears at the sight of this bizarre looking creature that is, you know, abducting her from her nannies, she started to smile and laugh and giggle and play with me. And so I got to go back to and relive in beautiful, wonderful detail and slow motion and just relish this beautiful experience. So <laughs> it was amazing. It was wonderful. And then, you know, the the infusion ran to the end and I start to drift away from that and I start to become aware of the blood pressure cuff on my arm and, I'm, and the, the feel of the infusion chair under me. And, you know, 15 minutes later, I'm up and back to, you know, doing stuff, making phone calls, uh, shuffling paper, you know. It was a beautiful experience. I have such a problem with giving up control. Mm -hmm. I'm very Mm -hmm. control-oriented. One of my biggest fears is that I guess I'll I'll lose my mind. I don't know what I'm thinking, but uh, it's it's a fear. I part of My biggest problem is fearing fear, you know. I fear the fact that I might be so afraid that I can't, th- I can't stand it. Mm. So, so, so that's the kind of background I have. So I don't know how I would react to letting go. And I, it might be good, but I don't know. Well, you know, and, and lots of my patients uh, over the years have, you know, talked about this idea of, you know, that they fear losing control. And that's one of the things they don't like about it. And and quite frankly, you know, uh, a small proportion of them, you know, when they um, uh, receive a ketamine infusion, they don't really like it because they do feel a little out of control. You know, when the infusion ends, everything goes back to normal. You know, within 15, 20 minutes, uh, you're up, you know, able to walk around and, you know, get a ride home. Um, but, you know, they don't like that. Now, here's here's the, the thing to keep in mind. It doesn't matter whether you like the infusion or not. It still turns on neuroplasticity. The molecular biology doesn't care whether you're having a good time or not. And therefore, you know, <laughs> even though they don't like the infusions, their depression gets better. Okay, but you never had a case where, or heard of a case where a person basically lost their mind from it. No, 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 no. Yeah. no. In fact, you know, in all the 10 years, we've only had one person hallucinate in all that time. Wow. Okay. Maybe I'll try. I got to get the nerve up to try it. Yeah. So my goal is for people not to hallucinate. But you got to understand that, you know, these other clinics out there, they're they're giving, you know, big dog doses of ketamine in this uh, in this, uh, you know, stupid, uneducated um, allegiance to this myth that a person must hallucinate in order to get an antidepressant benefit. And there's zero data to support that. Um, my paper back in 2015 disproved that. Multiple papers since then have disproved it. It's just it's a myth, mm-hmm. but a lot of people adhere to it. So you go to you know Joe Blow Ketamine Clinic there in New Jersey, you know God only knows. Um, but you know you tell them not to go above half a milligram per kilogram. Okay. That's the one place. You know yeah. if you have control over the dosing. You can say, look, don't go above that. You know, gotcha. and so doesn't matter where you are in the country to all of your listeners. It's like, don't let them uh, tell you that you had to, you had to have a horrible experience. You can have a nice experience. Half a milligram per kilogram turns on the molecular biology just fine. Great. I mean, that's, that's a very good description of it. Um, do you have a website where people can look at all the different uh, treatments that you offer? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's www.neuroluminance.com. I'm going to spell that. Neuro, N-E-U-R-O hyphen luminance, L-U-M-I-N-A-N-C-E. And 
a lot of what I, a lot of what we're talking about, I describe in my book, which is available on Amazon. Right. I was, I was just going to ask you about your book. Yeah. <laughs> what is the, what is the name and what is it about? Uh, so it's called Brighter Days Ahead: Leaving Depression Behind Through Innovative New Treatments. And you know, in, in many ways, we've just, we've already talked about the book. I talk about in the book, I. I, I make the point that depression is not what we've been told it is. It's not about serotonin. It's not about chemical imbalances. That's hogwash that we've been fed for years. I, I use ketamine as a model, but I spend, you know, a lot of detail on ketamine talking about, you know, what's how to, ketamine works. Um, I have a whole chapter on frequently asked questions about ketamine, you know, Ketamine and bipolar, ketamine and this medicine or that medicine, how's it compared to TMS, how's it compared to shock therapy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I also talk about, you know, choosing a clinic. You know, you don't want to choose a clinic that after your infusion, they, you know, kick you out the door and you end up curled up in the hallway of the building, passed out. You know, you don't want that experience. But, you know, this is experiences that, that uh, patients and uh, reporters and other people have told me about over the years. And I capture some of that in the book. I also that talk about good. what it means if ketamine doesn't work. Okay, because everybody, that's their worst fear, right? I'm at the end of the line. I've tried everything else. I'm going to try this crazy ketamine stuff. God only knows. And then they, they worry, what if it doesn't work for me? Well, you know, it doesn't work for 28% of people. And what's the okay. reason? Well, the reason is that they have something else causing their depression. Uh, remember at the beginning, I said, you know, these psychiatric terms are garbage pail terms. Depression isn't one thing. You can be mm -hmm. depressed because you have a traumatic brain injury. You could be depressed because you have an infection in your brain, a viral infection in your brain. You can be depressed because you have a tick-borne illness that is causing psychiatric symptoms. With COVID is a good example. I think people got depressed. Absolutely. They got long COVID. And, you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but the conventional medicines do work to a point, but they seem to kind of give up at a certain point. And they, they bring you out of a bad depression, but as far as making you a, a content, happy person... They fall a little short. Absolutely. I recently got into a uh, alternative medicine called uh, Premapixel. Have you heard of it? Yeah. It, it, it is supposed to produce more dopamine, and it, it changed my life in a way because it got rid of my apathy, and it got rid of my a lot of my depression. But I believe it, it actually increased anxiety a bit. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it, it's good medicine. I mean, it's... It, it's excellent. I don't think I would have gotten through the last couple of years because they've been very bumpy it w without that medicine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was like a godsend. And I, I can't imagine feeling great the whole day. I just, I mean, I have happy moments. I'm, I'm super better. I'm much better than I used to be. Mm -hmm. But there are still times of the day, like midday, like now, where I'm not really myself. You know, I'm either sleepy, I fall asleep, I, uh, and so there's no exact choice. At night, I, I get, you know, tired, so then I get depressed, depressed a little bit. So, you know, the morning is great, the afternoon is, is not that great, part of the night is very good, but then late at night, you know, because I'm not ready for, for bed, but my body is, I guess. So, it... There hasn't been a permanent solution, and I talk to a lot of people, and and a lot of people can't can't find one where you're just you don't have these episodes, you don't have the the demons on your back. I mean, I'm constantly being attacked by, uh, you know, not voices, but just memories or or emotions uh, that scare me, and you know, I I do my best to be brave through them, but I went through a couple really bad, really bad depressions, and I, I don't want anything to do with that anymore, and hopefully I'm in a safe area, but I, I'm almost willing to start going after the, the other alternative uh, ideas like ketamine, and I think a lot of people out there are very interested in this as well, so I really have to thank you for coming on and explaining all of this. Uh, what I do is 
at the end, uh, if you have anything to say to the audience, I give you, you know, you got the last say. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let me, yeah. Let me give it a little wrap up. So, um, and just so that we've, you know, given a nod to the, to the federal regulations, um, Pramapexel is FDA approved for the treatment of Parkinson's and restless leg syndrome. Um, there is some uh, off-label use, and my co- myself and my colleagues have been using it to help with depression and people who experience, you know, uh, symptoms related to not enough dopamine. And and so you found a good doc who's smart and actually reads the literature. So congratulations on that. But you know, you were talking about how you know medicine only goes so far, and one of the things that frustrates the devil out of me. I'm I'm a bit of a maverick. I want things to move forward. That's why I've literally invented treatments and patented new treatments. You know, the, for example, the infrared light therapy, you know, this is, this is going to be the fifth branch of medicine. Infrared light has a a great power to help. We are treating people who have COVID uh, symptoms like they can't breathe. uh, And, and multiple practitioners are using infrared light to treat the lungs and seeing that vastly improve. Um, you know, the potential that infrared light could hold Parkinson's disease or dementia at bay is very real. Uh, and, you know, certainly for treating depression, you know, our patients get better and stay better. You know, it's not take a pill every day. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Do you have any other uh, websites or places to go? Are you on Facebook as well? Uh, yeah, Neuroluminous is on Facebook and and uh, um, on LinkedIn, and you know we're and Amazon. Yep, Amazon has your book. Amazon, yep, Amazon, yep. And you know, I I believe in color pictures um, and color diagrams to help people understand things, and and you have to pay for that color printing. So the ebook is a great way to go because it's less expensive. But if you like to hold a book in your hand, like I do. You know, we got to cover the cost of the color printing. So I apologize um, that the book is priced the way it was, um, but and that was the 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 um, trade off to have color printing. And, and I think the book is inspirational. Uh, I think the book, uh, uh, you know, gives examples of people's real experiences with depression. Um, I get depression. I, I I've been there at one time in my life. And, you know, I, I want uh, everyone to, you know, be able to have, you know, a, a pill-free uh, um, life without depression. Wow. That's just a dream for me, a pipe dream, because, uh, you know, I'm always looking, and I don't see people giving me a lot of answers that really is going to help. Uh, this is one. I mean, I... I think I'm going to jump into the, to the can of mine if, if I get enough nerve or at least maybe try out the other, the other uh, NILT you, you were talking about, yeah, I believe. Yeah. And yeah, maybe I'll, I'd be able to come out there. Who knows? And, uh, so, I mean, if it works for me, you got a, you got a lifelong, lifelong commercial. <laughs> I'll, I'll always promote it. Well, that'd be great to hear. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, again, thank you so much. You were a great guest. Thank you. I mean, uh, you allowed me to talk. <laughs> Sometimes I get in with doctors and they just go, go, go. Yeah. But you were excellent yeah. with that, and I appreciate that. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And you as well. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Real pleasure. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.